My privilege today to have as my guest the Director of Communications for Assemblies of God World Missions and our Evangelism Commissioner for the Assemblies of God, Randy Hurst. Randy, great to have you with us today. Thanks, Ken. And we're going to talk about something that I know is very dear to your heart. You've uh, been right in the middle of a lot of uh, the Assemblies of God's plans in, o over Pentecost Sunday for the past several years. Mm -hmm. And um, there are two sp specific things we want to talk about today. Pentecost and evangelism, and I know both are dear to your heart. Um, what is the significance of Pentecost Sunday? Someone said today, Pentecostals seem to celebrate uh, a lot of holidays, but not all of them even celebrate Pentecost Sunday. What's it about? Well, you know, the interesting thing is that in many parts of the world, in the Christian community, Pentecost Sunday is bigger than Easter. Uh, in some places, even bigger than Christmas. It, it's just amazing. But in the American culture, it hasn't been recognized a lot. In many of the liturgical churches, they do, but not in the way we would. Um, and uh, Pentecost Sunday, you know, it was very important to the Apostle Paul. Because remember one of his epistles, I want to get back there in time for Pentecost. And uh, of course, in the Old Testament, it was associated with harvest, so it was connected with the harvest season. And uh, while that's not exactly the intent, I think it's very appropriate because uh, the whole purpose of the empowerment of the Spirit that was given at Pentecost is for the spiritual harvest in the world. And so uh, there's a real connection there. And for those of us as Pentecostals, it's unfortunate um, a lot of churches don't seem to recognize Pentecost Sunday. And I think one of the reasons for that is it falls during the time of high school graduations and things like that. But um, it's a wonderful opportunity. I know that this year, Dr. Wood is encouraging pastors, every Assemblies of God pastor, not just to preach on the Holy Spirit, but to preach on the baptism in the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and provide time and opportunity for people to seek for spirit baptism on Pentecost Sunday. Hmm. Yeah. And I think we have, we have seen an increase in the number of churches beginning to recognize this very important. Oh, day. yeah. And over the years, uh, actually starting to really push Pentecost Sunday, went back to Brother pra Trask's uh, time. And um, I was asked to do it one year, and then it just kind of went to the next. Yeah. Uh, this year, it's being handled a little differently because of the centennial. Mm -hmm. But Dr. Wood is really focusing on spirit baptism for that Sunday. Um, but, you know, over the years, we've seen a lot of people do it. We've done downloadable videos uh, back with Brother Trask with him. And then when Dr. Wood came in as superintendent with him, uh, they're five-minute videos. And we've had, you know, well over a thousand churches utilize those over the years. And, uh, yeah. and some of the resources the Evangelism Commission put together, including a book called Helping Others Receive the Gift. Mm. Uh, one of the things that's uh, surprisingly, a lot of people, even who see the need for spirit baptism and want to see it happen. They're uncomfortable about helping people seek for spirit baptism. Mm. And this was a book put together by a lot of people who regularly are praying with people to experience the baptism. So we've seen a great increase yeah. because of just people understanding Jesus is the baptizer. You know, yeah. there are some very simple principles. Yeah. Well, what's the most important thing or the most important things about Pentecost? What's, what is the core of what we're dealing with here? Well, you know, I think um, it's not insignificant that the connection with tongues and Pentecost, now, uh, of course, on the day of Pentecost, people heard them in their languages. And, uh, you know, because of that incident, not only in the early days of the Assemblies of God and in the early days of other Pentecostal fellowships, but even in other holiness movements, they actually believed when missionaries went overseas, they wouldn't have to study languages because the Holy Spirit would just give them the language. Well, they quickly learned that wasn't an automatic thing. Although I could give yeah. examples, one very specific one, but many, but, but one from Indonesia where uh, instantaneously R.B. Cavanus was given the ability to preach in that language. At the conclusion of the service, everyone came rushing up and started talking to him and he couldn't understand him. It happened wow. one time yeah. and then he had to study the language. So yeah. God can do that, but that's not the normal way. Yeah. But I think at Pentecost, the fact of tongues, it's also symbolic. You know, and, and I like something evangelist Tim Enlo says. If you can have faith for God to enable you 
to speak in a language you've never learned, then you can have faith for God to enable you to tell people about Jesus in a language you have learned. Yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah. the big key. Yeah. Amen. Well, let's talk about one other thing before we bring the two things together. Uh, you've been an evangelist for many years. Mm -hmm. um, talk about evangelism and the importance of evangelism. And is there less emphasis on it today than there used to be? I don't, I, I wouldn't say there's less. I think it's different. You know, when I grew up, uh, the evangelist would come have an extended meeting and you'd invite your unsaved friends. That still happens. I could name evangelists that are still very effectively doing that. Um, one of the things that's changed that is multiple services mm -hmm. uh, and the kind of work schedules people deal with, both parents working and working shift work and this sort of thing. It's made those things. But I, I have to tell you that um, so many pastors are passionate about reaching the lost of their community and doing everything they can to mo motivate and to mobilize people in evangelism. So, no, I don't think it's less. I just think it's through different means. And uh, frankly, while I think we still need some of those events, it's the day-to-day -day people depending on the Holy Spirit and letting, letting the Spirit prompt them to reach out and respond to people and uh, that's a thing we've really emphasized a lot. It's not about a canned routine. Yeah. Uh, this is one thing I think where the scripture is appropriate. You know that in the moment, sometimes subconsciously or even semi-consciously, the Spirit can prompt us to say things we don't even understand yeah. why we say them. Yeah. But that's not the primary issue. The primary issue is that the Spirit enables us to be beyond our natural personalities. People who are normally shy, yeah. <laughs> when they get filled with the Spirit, all of a sudden, they yeah. can't stop telling people about Jesus. Yeah. Kind of like Peter and John yeah. said, we cannot but speak of yeah. the things we've seen and heard. And yeah. that's a gr one of the greatest things of the Holy Spirit's empowerment is the motivational empowerment to move us to action. Yeah, and that was my next question. You've already uh, touched on it uh, pretty strongly. How do Pentecost and evangelism go together? Well, let's narrow it down even, not just Pentecost, to the spirit baptism, mm -hmm. okay? Jesus said, we all know Acts 1-8, you'll receive power, and I need to say that about the word power, the Greek word dunamis, from which we get the word dynamite, does not mean explosive power. <laughs> dynamite got its name from the word, not the other way around. It was hundreds of years before dynamite was invented. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, dunamis simply means ability. And... For you, it's a different enablement than for me because we all have different strengths and weaknesses. I've said it this way, to the introvert, the spirit may give you courage to speak up. To the extrovert, he may need to give you wisdom to shut up mm. because sometimes yeah. Yeah. half of effective witnessing is listening to people yeah. and God opens doors of opportunity. So I think that when people experience, there are many people tragically have experienced spirit baptism and don't recognize, while it's not the only purpose, it's the, the specifically stated purpose yeah. Jesus gave. Right. And if you're not sharing Jesus with people, you're not utilizing the gift for the primary purpose that Jesus gave it. Yeah. Can you think of some examples from your ministry of people whose lives have been transformed by the baptism in the Holy Spirit and have begun to touch souls and lives? Oh, yeah. I, uh, let me give you an example from a country I can't name, a restricted access mm -hmm. country. A uh, pastor friend of mine uh, was imprisoned, and he actually spent four prison terms for preaching the gospel. Wow. Every time they let him out, he'd preach again, and they put him back in prison. In each of those imprisonments, he led other believers to the Lord. In his fourth imprisonment, he, he led 42 cellmates to the Lord and two of his prison guards. One of those 42, I want to tell you his story. I'll call him Wong. That's not his name. And uh, Wong received Christ. He was a drug dealer. Received Christ. When he got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he came to, I'll call my friend Pastor Paul, and he said, Pastor Paul, God's called me to be an evangelist. And <laughs> he's in prison. And Paul said, fine, just start telling people about Jesus. Well, then when he was released from prison, he uh, went to show up at at uh, the place where the Bible school was, the Assemblies of God Bible School, which, by the way, moved every day because they had to meet covertly. Wow. Well, uh, he could only sit in on the classes because the term was almost finished. 
Well, Pastor Paul told him, and this is a requirement in that country at that time, that before you could get into Bible school, you had to read the Bible through five times and lead five people to Christ. Now, he said, look, we'll let you spread your Bible reading out over the year, but you must lead five people to Christ in the one month before Bible school. So he had one month to lead five people to Christ. Now, remember, this guy's not been to Bible school, so he hasn't had Evangelism 101, yeah. but he's full of Holy Spirit. Yeah. Well, he moved to the, his hometown was a city where there was not one Christian church anywhere in the city. And uh, three weeks later, he called back to Pastor Paul because, of course, Wong wasn't credentialed. Pastor Paul was. He said, will you come and baptize those I've led to Christ? And Pastor Paul said, do you have five? And Wong said, no. Paul said, then I'm not going to come because he said, until you have five, I won't come baptize them. It's 200 miles. And he said, oh, no, Pastor Paul, I have more than five. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul didn't ask him how many. So Paul got on the train, went up there and baptized, not five, but 753 in three oh weeks. Goodness. Well, I'm not saying everyone to get to the baptism Incredible. happened, but all he did was he just passionately shared Jesus and what Jesus did for him, the simple gospel, and yeah. prayed with people. Yeah. You've had the privilege of traveling all over the world, seeing uh, missions uh, in full throat, uh, just seeing it work, uh, and the, the ups and the downs. Uh, how has the infilling of the Holy Spirit, even similar to what you just shared, transformed lives and built churches and uh, brought communities to the Lord overseas? Well, I'll bring one you know, because I know you've preached in this church, in Pastor Mohan's, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. in Chennai, India. I think it's the last I count I knew they had 40,000 attending on yeah. Sunday. And you and I both preached there. And I talked to Pastor Mohan, I used this example on our Evangelism Commission website, because some people say, we don't have time with multiple services to allow people to seek. Well, here's what Mohan does. Every month, he has Holy Spirit Sunday. Now, that doesn't mean he preaches on the Holy Spirit, but on, on that day, at the prayer time, he invites anyone who hasn't received the Holy Spirit to leave the sanctuary and go into the, an auditorium where they are praying with people. People have fasted and prayed, and they will have hundreds filled every month. Because, as Mohan says, without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, this church cannot go forward. I remember yeah. when, when Tim interviewed him, our videographer, mm -hmm. and he said, he said, Pastor Mohan, on camera, he said, how did you, what do you account for the great growth of this church? And Mohan said, we pray. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Tim's waiting for him to say more. <laughs> yeah. And so Tim's saying, and Mohan said, always we pray. <laughs> it was that yeah. simple. So that's just one example. But Ken, right now in, in Slovakia, a uh, move of God's Spirit among the gypsies. Mm -hmm. These 95% wow. unemployment. And these people, and here's the incredible thing, not just that they're passionately sharing Jesus, their lives are changed. Gypsies have a reputation of being thieves in Europe. These people get saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, and with 95% unemployment, they stop stealing. Yeah. And they just exemplify the transformed yeah. life that the Holy Spirit brings. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a fantastic life to know God and to know the fullness of His Holy Spirit and, and then to see it result mm -hmm. in uh, many other lives transformed for the Lord. Would you uh, talk to the, the viewer or the reader of this interview uh, who might be wondering whether the baptism in the Holy Spirit is for them? Well, you know, uh, I love um, what the Word says. You know, this promise is for you and for your children and all that are afar off. Yeah. And that afar yeah. off didn't just regard, m m mean regarding t uh, space, but also time. Yes. We're the afar yes. off in yes. time. Yes. It's for everyone, yeah. the fullness of the Spirit. And uh, I go back to the word dunamis. You know, how I would, I would translate dunamis, it simply means enabled or ability I like to say it this way, whatever it takes. Yeah. That the promise of the Spirit is for whatever it takes. And God has a purpose for every one of us. We're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Yeah. But right after Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, which a lot of people know, and that we're not saved by good works, verse 10 says we're mm -hmm. saved for good works. Right. And God has prepared them. Simply, we cannot effectively do the good works, God's plan for every one of us, in our own ability. We need more, and that's what the Holy Spirit gives to everyone 
So it's not just the stereotypical things that people think about boldness. Yes, for one person it is. Yeah. But I'd encourage anyone that's reading or listening, you know, you say, Holy Spirit, what? You help me do the good works that Jesus, I was created in Christ Jesus to do. That's what he wants to do. Yeah. What does that person do then that's, that's uh, watching or reading right now? How do they begin seeking this? Uh, it's very simple. Ask. You know, mm. it's a gift. Ask. And I will tell you, um, I think I can help some people who struggle with it because I was what they used to call a chronic seeker. And, and by the way, who wouldn't okay. mind my saying that? Dr. Wood, our general superintendent, was too. I think one of us, it took, it took me seven years. He got it quicker in six years, I think it was. Uh, <laughs> but the fact is, yeah. we both had hang-ups being raised in a Pentecostal church. We expected the Holy Spirit to take control of us. And he doesn't take control. He enables. He doesn't control. Mm. We have to do the speaking. So I'd say very simply to people, first of all, remember, Jesus is the baptizer. Yeah. John the Baptist said, he will baptize you mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the baptizer. Pray to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I'm created in you to do good works. You give me the promise that, that you gave so that I can be the witness you want me to be. And ask in faith. It's a gift. There's nothing you do to earn it. And, and if something, you'll see as you start to worship him, as you start to pray, when you see some, feel something strange you're going to utter, just speak it out. Don't wait for him to take control because you're not a puppet. And you just speak out in faith because you do the speaking. But remember the purpose. The focus is not so you can speak in tongues so you say, I've got it, and say, I've arrived. It's not a point of arrival. It's a point of entry into the fullness of the Spirit in doing the good works you were created in Jesus to do. Randy, anything else at all you'd like to share about uh, Pentecost or evangelism before we close? Well, you know, I, I wish I could take people with me. I've had the privilege of going to more than 80 countries. You've gone to a number of them for us, and you've seen it. Wherever we go, um, you know, we look at people who have far less resources than we. And in the empowerment of the Spirit, they are accomplishing more than we. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need to go to school on this. Mm -hmm. Listen, that's nothing against the wonderful resources we have. Every one of us needs that divine resource. Uh, I, I, I pray in the Spirit every day, not to prove I've got the baptism, but because I don't know how to pray as I should. Mm. And I receive that liberty in it. And it's not just about tongues, but there are more purposes than tongues than initial evidence. It's so you can intercede for others beyond your own capacity. So that's even an integral part of it. But, um, you know, all of us have lack of certain resources. And all of us need the fullness to do, as I said, the good works we were created in Jesus to do. Amen. Well, Randy, I'd just like to say publicly, it's been a, a privilege to minister alongside of you for the last many years <laughs> oh, thanks, and Ken. see what God has done through you and your ministry and as he has helped you uh, to lead your areas in, in the assembly. Well, and thanks for all the trips you've made overseas for us. And uh, our partnership with the Evangel World Missions has been incredible. You know, now it's uh, almost 17 years yep. and with the missions edition. And, uh, yep. and, and, and I will tell you, just like one example, uh, one, uh, just in one article, I remember in Vanuatu, you know, mm -hmm. when Kirk Noonan went and, and just the missionary said, you know, we need a nurse here. And yeah. someone was reading the Evangel in Joplin, Missouri. And he took two years, went and founded the Hope Clinic because he read the Evangel, started that medical clinic. Out of that clinic, they have planted churches in, in uh, unreached islands throughout Vanuatu. Yeah. And it traces back to them reading the Evangel. Yeah. My father-in-law, who planted more than 250 churches in Brazil in 55 years. Uh, got his call confirmed to Brazil, reading the Evangel back in 1927. <laughs> so God uses the Evangel to speak yeah, to people's praise. hearts. Thank you. Our guest has been Randy Hurst, uh, Director of Communications for the Assemblies of God World Missions and Evangelism Commissioner. Thanks again for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.